Hello everyone and welcome to another FPL video on the channel. In this video we'll be taking a look at our game week 6 team, how we did and what we're going to do moving forward for game week 7. So let's get into it. So in net we have Meslier and once again the man has failed me. He walks away with a massive return of 1 point. He just can't keep clean sheets can they Leeds at the minute. And the only time they did is when I benched him. So then in defence we have James and Trent who both combined for a massive 1 point each. Fantastic returns from the lads. Um, you know, Liverpool just don't look that good at the minute, do they? 0-0 draw against Everton. And Trent gets brought off in the 59th minute. I mean, come on. Come on, Klopp. One more minute, mate. And then James against West Ham. Um, they conceded one goal. Should have been two. But, um, yeah, unfortunate, really. But happy to own them as Chelsea have good fixes moving forward. So then we have Trippier who walks over eight points, uh, and a uh, sorry clean sheet and a couple bonus points. Good return from him. So yeah, happy with that. Then we have Zaha who I brought in this week for Rodrigo, as Rodrigo was confirmed he's going to be out for about three to four weeks. So I just wanted to move him on. Zaha had a fixture against Newcastle, which wasn't bad, and he's been on great form. So I thought I'd move him in. Fortunately, he only walked away with an extra point due to a clean sheet. So then we have Salah again. He's just not been in, not been doing too much, has he really, this season? Um, he hit the post, but you know, at 13 million, is he cutting it? Could he be out the door potentially? It's a lot of money for for what we're not we're not getting really. You know, he's not doing enough in my opinion. Three points, four. So then we have Gross walks over an assist. Happy days. You know, a nice little return from him. So yeah, he just keeps ticking along nicely, doesn't he? Then we have Martinelli, two-pointer. Uh, he did actually score, but it was ruled out due to a foul in the build-up. Uh, yeah, blank against my club, Manchester United. Happy days, mate. Then we have Jesus again, who also blanked against Man United. So yeah, good stuff. You know, take my real team over FPL team any day of the week. Lovely 3-1 victory come on United then we have Erling Haaland as captain another goal for him and he gets bonus points 18 points overall nine points if you didn't captain him so good stuff from Haaland and yeah he's a bit of a machine isn't he just scores every game week then we have the monster hall from the man of the match Ivan Tony what a legend a hat trick you know, he was sold a lot. A lot of people sold him due to a couple blanks. But they've got amazing fixtures. And, you know, they've been decent this season, Brentford. And when they're on it, they're on it. So, yeah, a hat-trick from him. They scored five goals in a 5-2 victory. So, yeah, really happy with that. We walked away with 60 points. And, as you can see there, our rank is currently 1.1 million. However, due to this week, we are now... 500k so we've halved our rank which is fantastic on the bench we got no returns we got two one zero and two so you know none of them would have made a difference which is good to know so let's get into our potential moves what are we looking at so now we're on to our potential targets as you can see on the screen we have diogo dallo against palace away we have nick pope against west ham away and we have marcus rashford against Palace away so currently my team Manchester United are doing very well in the league and um, well recently anyway we started off poorly but you know four one four wins in a row is not bad at all and defensively we look very solid now Diego Dallo is 4.5 million he's pretty attacking as well and he's got a good good cross on him so he's a cheap way into that Manchester United defense there's also Malasio at 4.4 and Martinez at I think 4.5 I think so United are you know cheap defense but I think Dallo is nailed on a right back wan is not in favor with Ten Hag so you know he could be a good route in there maybe replace him with Henry then there's also Nick Pope as you know I've had trouble with my goalkeeper Meslier and Newcastle are a much better side and defensively they look pretty good they kept a clean sheet last game and Pope got I believe nine saves so he walked away with a massive haul of about 12 points. And at 5.1 million, it's a bit of a bump up in price from Meslier. But 
if he can produce more clean sheets, then it'll be worth it in the long run, won't it? Then we have Marcus Rashford. Now, if he can lock up his place up front, which it seems like he has been doing, then he could be an excellent option at 6.4 million. Now, I looked at him during pre-season as you know, a great potential option if he can nail a spot. And that's what he's been doing up front. Now, he got two goals and an assist in his last game. Ten Hag seems to like him a lot because he offers that super pace in behind, which is what we've been looking to to exploit, you know. And with players like Ericsson and Bruno able to feed him in behind, it's, it's working perfectly at the moment. And now I believe that Rashford is back into some sort of form. You know, he's been a bit... He was last season, he was very poor. However, this season looked much better. And at 6.4 million, up front for Manchester United, it could be a steal. So yeah, those three are my targets. Potentially may bring in one this week. More than likely, it might be Nick Pope as I'm getting a bit fed up with Meslier. But he does have a good fixture. So let's have a look at my team for game week seven. So now looking at my team for game week seven, we have Meslier in goal. A fan favourite, I'm sure. Absolutely stinking the place out. However, Nottingham Forest is a good fixture, isn't it? And he's at home. So can I drop him for that? I don't know. But the chance he's going to keep a clean sheet, no, my luck, are zero. Then we have Saliba back in the side against Everton at home. Excellent fixture. Everton, not too much of a goal for it. I think Arsenal will want to bounce back as well. And I do see them keeping a clean sheet here against an Everton side. Then we have James against Fulham. Good fixture. Although Fulham seem to be quite good attacking wise anyway. So the clean sheet might not be easy in this match. But, you know, I think Chelsea are, should be stronger than Fulham. And James will offer that attacking threat down the wing back role now that he's playing there with Fafana in the side. Then we have Trent against Wolves at home. Should be a clean sheet. I mean, Wolves don't score too many goals. But Liverpool this season, bit dodgy. Um, and now there's a risk of rotation with him getting subbed out early on in the match. One minute before he gets a clean sheet. Then we have Trippier against West Ham. This won't, again, this won't be an easy clean sheet for Newcastle. But, you know, there's a the potential there. And obviously he's on set pieces as well. So hopefully he'll be involved in the attack. So now moving on to the midfield. And we have Mo Salah against Wolves at home. Now, it's very, very tempting to take him out. It's just, who do I move him to? That's my issue here. Now, I could move him, let's say I move him to Rashford, and that will give me a ton of funds to do something elsewhere. It's just, I wouldn't know what to do with that money. So I think for now, Salah will survive by the skin of his teeth against Wolves, and hopefully he can produce something. Because it's a decent fixture, and yeah, need him to start scoring some goals or getting some assists. Then we have Pascal Gross against Bournemouth. Great fixture. Brighton on good form. You know, they scored five goals against Leicester today. So I'm expecting uh, Gross to be involved again as he was yesterday or today. He only got one assist, but nonetheless, a return is a return. And at 5.6 million, he's not that expensive either. Then we have Martinelli against Everton. Great fixture, like I said, on excellent form. Scored yesterday against United, but it was ruled out due to being a foul, as I said before. So, you know, it just shows that he's on the top of his game right now. And I think he's going to continue that against Everton. And he'll be involved, no doubt. So then, moving on to the attack. And we have Ivan Toni off the back of a hat-trick. He's in the side again. He's got Southampton away. Not a bad fixture at all. Brentford, love a good goal. And I expect them to get some goals in that match. Southampton, they're not a bad side, actually. I, I do underestimate them, but I think Brentford will get a couple goals at least. And I'm hoping Ivan Tony will be involved. Then we have Erling Haaland against Tottenham at home. Now, it is tempting to captain our Haaland just every week, to be honest, because I feel like he's fixture-proof. I feel like he can score against anyone. And Tottenham, they've not looked the best this season, in my opinion. But it is a strong, they do have a strong side. So it's better to captain someone who's got an easier fixture. Like my current captain, which is Gabriel Jesus. 
who has Everton at home. Now, he didn't do too much against Manchester United, but, you know, prior to that, he's been in great form and, you know, Everton's a much easier fixture than United. So I'm expecting him to be involved and I do think Arsenal win that game by a couple goals. So that's why I've gone with Jesus as captain for now and potentially he'll be that captain come Friday unless something changes. So then on the bench we have Ward against Villa. No chance he's getting in the lineup. Leicester looks so poor defensively. Then we have Andreas versus Chelsea. Now I think Andreas will get something out of this game to be honest. But it's just who do I bring him in instead of? There's not really an option there that I want to take out of my side. But then we have Zaha at home to Manchester United. Tough one to not start. Zaha, you know, he's, he can score against anyone on his day. But United have been very good recently. Martinez and Varane, you know, bringing up a great partnership and very solid at the back. So I think they're going to limit Palace to the a, a low amount of goals, if any. And that is why I'm benching Zaha. Then we have Henry against Southampton. Brentford defensively, I don't don't trust them anymore. You know, I brought them in because they had an excellent amount of fixtures, but they've just not kept many clean sheets, if any. So I think he's going to be on the way out soon enough. Potentially could be this week for maybe a Jogo Dallo, as I mentioned prior to this, but I'm not sure. At the minute, I've made no transfers, and I'll let you know on Friday. So that's the you know weekend review and potential moves moving forward hope you guys have enjoyed this video if it's been any help please feel free to drop a like and subscribe we're so close to 200 subscribers which is fantastic thank you so much for that hopefully we're going to hit that in the next couple days that would be amazing if you need any help with any fpl tips or anything like that please feel free to leave your teams or questions down in the comment section down below and i'll be sure to help you out to the best of my ability and hope that i can uh, get you some points but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers guys.